if you are looking to visit the magical island of Fuerteventura in Spain, you are in luck. This is the most extensive itinerary you will need to explore the island and soak in its charm. Truthfully speaking, I had never heard of this island until recently. Then I saw some pictures of its beaches and instantly booked my tickets. Now it is on the top of the list for my most favorite beach destination in Europe. We spent 7 nights and 8 days in this island and enjoyed every bit of it. You could spend more or less time here depending on your preferences. We will be visiting some breathtaking beaches, hiking spots, desert, volcanoes, traditional villages and much more over the course of this video. I am Emily and you are watching M Knows Places. Just 100 kilometers away from the northern coast of Africa, Fuerteventura enjoys a subtropical temperature with 300 days of sunny weather. So, it is the perfect getaway from the harsh European winters. We visited Fuerteventura in the last week of April and the weather was just perfect. We took a flight from Frankfurt to Fuerteventura and it took us around four and a half hours to reach. We took a rental car from Hertz and drove off to our Airbnb. You can reach the longest point of the island from north to south under two hours. So we decided to book only one stay for the entire vacation and make day trips to different points. We stayed near Moro Jable because of its proximity to the beach, shops and restaurants. Sometimes, during the shoulder season, restaurants and shops may be closed in the lesser popular areas. Make sure to check before booking your accommodation. The drive to our Airbnb was breathtaking and we were already falling in love with the island. We spent the rest of the evening in our apartment enjoying the view from our balcony. We were super excited to start our first full day in Fuerteventura. We decided to visit the most elusive part of the island first. Cofete is considered to be one of the best spots to enjoy a sunset in Fuerteventura. However, you have to drive a long dirt road to reach this beach. We did not want to risk driving back in the dark, so we decided to get this out of the way in the morning itself. It was a well-marked dirt road, which became quite narrow and tricky at times. You do not need a 4x4 for this trip, but be extra careful if you are not a seasoned driver. We were rewarded with one of the most dramatic beach views once we reached Cofete. The longest stretch of yellow sand beach surrounded by mountains everywhere. It is not recommended to take a dip at Cofete because of the big waves. We sat and enjoyed the views for a while before heading back. We stopped at a viewpoint along the dirt road to enjoy a bird's eye view of the dramatic Cofete. 
be sure to check it out if you are visiting. It is called Mirador de Cofete. After this, we headed to the southernmost point of the island to visit the Punta Jandia lighthouse. It is a short trip through a dirt road from Crofete. This place seemed like the end of the world. Nothing but sweeping views everywhere and a beautiful black lighthouse. It was totally worth the trip. Next, we left the dirt roads to visit some of the more popular beaches of Fuerteventura. We were also quite hungry after our morning adventure. We passed some of the most dramatic landscapes on our way. Our first stop was Playa de Malanombre. We had our lunch at the only tavern located right on the beach, followed by a dip in the ocean. The waters were crystal clear and we had a pretty relaxing time at the beach. Next, we drove to our last stop for the day. Playa de Sotavento is considered to be one of the most beautiful beaches in Europe. The turquoise water and the white sand make the most dramatic landscape forming lagoons. It is also one of the most windy beaches in Fuerteventura, making it one of the favorite spots for kite enthusiasts. You will find kite enthusiasts all over the island on a windy day. There are also shops to rent kites if you want to try it yourself. After a very adventurous day, we slowly made our way back to our Airbnb. We enjoyed our first Fuerteventura sunset on our way back. It was the perfect way to end our day. We started off our third day in Fuerteventura with an adventurous mindset. It was going to be a long day with a few spots to cover. I had seen pictures of a place called Barrancos Encantado on the internet. 
and wanted to witness this unique landscape in person. As usual, it was not going to be easy to just visit and click a few Insta-worthy pics. Barrancos Encantado is a 3-kilometer-long ravine. It can be accessed from north and south directions. The southern access is easier and more straightforward. However, we came to know the northern part of the ravine is more dramatic and untouched. We followed Google Map until the roundabout at Lajares and then lost signal. I had downloaded the offline map and we just tried to reach it through the dirt roads. We got lost many times and even got scared to be in the middle of the desert with nobody around. Finally, we found it and it was one of the most unique landscapes we had ever seen. It is so peculiar to think these landscapes were formed by volcanic activities 135,000 years ago. They are fossil dunes formed by water and shaped by wind. We ended up spending four long hours at this place, mainly because we got lost. Therefore, I would recommend you to visit through the southern access as most people do and not repeat our mistake. Our next stop was short and sweet. The windmills of Villa Verde are a beautiful photo spot. We spent a few minutes here before heading to one of the most awaited spots on our list. This spot was one of the best places to observe the unique landscapes of Puerteventura. The road trip up here was not easy. Lots of twists and turns, but it was all worth it in the end. We witnessed one of the most dramatic sunsets from Mirador Sica Sumbre. It is one of the unmissable places in Fuerteventura. It was amazing to have the entire place to ourselves, like most places on this beautiful island. The winds were getting stronger, so we made our way back to our Airbnb to end our third day on this island. Our fourth day was all about unique beaches, perfect landscapes and scenic drives. We started our day with a dramatic drive along the coastline to our first stop for the day. This was perhaps the most popular spot in Fuerteventura. The sand dunes of Coralejo are strategically placed right along the beach, making it one of the most unique landscapes. You can actually witness a desert and an ocean in the same frame. We spent some time prancing on the sand dunes before taking a relaxing dip in the beautiful ocean water. 
you could easily spend an entire day lazing in the sands. It is also a photographer's paradise. After spending a solid 2 hours at the beach, we headed to our next stop. The Popcorn Beach is one of a kind and totally worth a quick stop if you are in the northern part of the island. The entire beach is covered with popcorn shaped pebbles and are quite unique to look at. Hard to believe these are actually algae fossils swept to the coast by waves. After this, we followed a dirt road along the northern coastline of Fuerteventura. It is one of the most scenic routes with beautiful beaches along the way. It starts at Coralejo and ends at Toston Lighthouse. Please note it is not shown as a route on Google Maps, so you have to follow your gut. Lighthouse El Toston is the starting point to the most beautiful beaches in El Cotillo. It is located at the northern tip of the island and worth a quick stop. We stopped at Playa Los Lagos to look at the Piscina Natural or natural pools formed by ocean water. You could get a free fish spa at these pools. We also stopped at the whale skeleton figurine at El Cotillo and admired the views from there. This part of our drive was absolutely gorgeous. We stopped at Playa del Aguela, my favorite beach until now to enjoy the views and the water. This was our last stop for the day. We enjoyed another Fuerteventura sunset as we headed back to our Airbnb.
we had quite a long list of places to visit on our fifth day on the island. As usual, we started the day with a dramatic drive. Our first stop was called the Ajui Caves. These caves have a unique history. Ajui Caves are one of the oldest natural formations in the Canary Islands. They are part of Fuerteventura's basal complex, which was formed by sediments and lava that erupted sub-aerially a hundred million years ago. This also started to create the basement complex rock holding Fuerteventura and Lanzarote Island. Most importantly, this place had the bluest waters we had seen so far on this island. Right next to the caves is a black sand beach which are a quite rare sight in Fuerteventura. We spend some time admiring the views before heading to our next stop. We took one of the most dangerous drives of our lives to reach our next stop. This was an elusive hike that we intended to take without hopes of actually finishing it. The Arco is a structure we had seen on the internet and wanted to visit. We were excited as well as nervous. Like most places on this island, it was not going to be an easy hike. This place was almost elusive and included a long and difficult hike. I'm going to guide you the best I can. There will most likely be no network on your phone and no marked route to the Arco. We parked our car at Aparsamiento and started our trail. You will notice little green and white marks on the stones along the trail. The initial part of the trail is scenic and well marked. You will pass several palm trees and other unique vegetations in the first part of the trail. Look out for the lizards. After a while, you will reach a huge dam on your left and walk along it to reach the white church to your left. We could not find any marked path after this. On the right side of the church, you will see a huge pile of rocks. Start climbing it with all four limbs. 
make sure to dress appropriately for this hike. After some climbing, you will reach a cave-like structure. Start climbing to the right side of the cave without entering it. After a short climb, you will find the arco to your left. This was the most difficult hike of my life and one I will never forget. The views from this place was extraordinary. We felt so grateful to be able to have this whole place to ourselves. The hike back was not easy but totally worth it. Make sure you are dressed properly for this hike. We did end up getting some scratches and bruises along the way. On our way back, we stopped at the dreamy village of Betang Korea to grab some late lunch and recover from our hike. This white village is one of the oldest villages in Fuerteventura, complete with a pretty church, palm trees and scenic narrow alleyways. After this, we made our way to a spot to catch the sunset. La Pared Beach is one of the best sunset spots in Fuerteventura. We were surprised to see a lot of people on this beach. Make sure to have some light covers with you as the wind can get pretty crazy here. We encountered one of the most dramatic sunsets of our lives before heading back to our Airbnb and call it a day. Our sixth day in Fuerteventura was going to be mostly about revisiting our favorite spots and a lot of beach time. But first, we wanted to check out a spot that seemed unreal on the Instagram Reels. It is known by the simple name of Piscina Natural or Natural Pool. It is located on the northern part of the island near Puerto de Rosario and is totally worth the drive. I will put a link to the exact location in the description. We were blown over when we reached this spot. Thanks to the Ginger Wanderlust for suggesting us to come during low tide for some perfect pictures. I will also leave the link to check the tide timings in the description box. You can easily spend a couple of hours relaxing, swimming and soaking in the views.
After this, we decided to take a dip at another beautiful beach in Fuerteventura. Playa Esmeralda had crystal clear waters and golden sand to relax. We spent the afternoon at this beach. Next, we headed back to our favorite lunch spot at Playa de la Nombre. We relaxed at the beach for a while before calling it a day. We spent the evening at our Airbnb enjoying a beautiful view from our balcony. I am usually not a fan of zoos or anywhere where animals are confined. But after seeing ads of Oasis Wildlife all around Fuerteventura, I was a little intrigued. So we decided to visit this zoo on our last full day in Fuerteventura. I must say it was a day full of adventures. The zoo is huge and if you are not into the animals, come for the flora and fauna. There are fascinating plants and trees everywhere. We saw all kinds of animals and they seemed to be pretty happy and content. We also met some of the staff here at this park and they actually seem to be crazy about the animals. You can also feed some of the animals like the camel and the giraffe which is quite an experience. Also, make sure to catch the sea lion show. It was really amazing to see these amazing creatures in action. We ended up spending the entire day here.
For sunset, we of course headed back to La Pare. It was yet another dramatic sunset, our last during this trip. It was the perfect way to end our vacation. We spent our last morning in Fuerteventura exploring Solana Matoral. That's where we were staying. We took last walks along the beach and bought some souvenirs for our friends back home. We had an afternoon flight, so we headed back to the airport after dropping off our rental. It was the perfect vacation with sunshine, beaches, great food and adventure. I hope I have encouraged you enough to visit this wonderful island. Do drop in a comment if you have any specific question. Also consider liking and subscribing to my channel so that I can make more videos like this. Until then, adios from Fuerteventura, see you next time.